Having a player collide with the environment is a very interesting mechanic that can not only allow for a player to have some very interesting interactions with the world that you create, but can, as a developer, allow for you to restrict a player at least somewhat to the world that you create. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a physics handle to create hands that will follow along with your motion control components, allowing for the player themselves to move outside the bounds, but restricting their body from going outside the bounds with it. Before we go ahead and jump into that, if you enjoy this video and want to see even more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments what kind of tutorials you guys would like to see in the future. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I've gone ahead and gotten a project open. So to get started, let's go ahead and start by creating a new blueprint that we can actually use to, uh, to enable these uh, secondary pair of hands that will basically fall around our motion control components. So let's go ahead and jump into content. We'll create a new folder and I'll just go and call this blueprints. Now we're only gonna have one thing that goes in here. So whether you create a new folder or not, that's entirely up to you. I'm gonna go and jump into blueprint class, create a new actor. I'm gonna call this collision hands. We'll go and open that up. Now in here, we're going to create um, a new pair of hands that we can actually use. And we're actually going to end up attaching this to the player itself. Uh, and we'll actually have a function as well that will automatically set everything up for us. So let's go and start by creating a couple of skeletal meshes as well as physics handles that we'll be using in order to make these new hands functional. So let's go and start with a skeletal mesh. Now I've actually imported, oh, let me actually rename that. Uh, I've actually imported a, the mannequin hands from uh, Unreal Engine 4, if I recall, uh, the Unreal Engine 4 VR template. So we'll actually be using these for our, for our skeletal mesh here. So let's go ahead and jump right into here and we'll do mannequin hand right. And we'll also wanna do mannequin, another mannequin hand right, but this one we're going to wanna actually uh, rotate, uh, invert the scale, if I recall. I believe it's Y, let me see here. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go and offset these a little bit as well. Uh, you shouldn't have to, but this just kinda makes sure that we have them correctly set up here. Uh, these will actually probably be a little bit off rotation uh, off of this setup, but it should still work pretty well for the most part at least. Now, <clears throat> a couple things we're gonna wanna do to both of these is first off, we're going to want to simulate physics. Now, it's an important thing to note for skeletal, blue, uh, skeletal mesh components, in order for them to be able to simulate physics, they need to have a physics asset associated with them. I won't be going into how to, and how to set up a physics asset here, <clears throat> but you do need to make sure that you do have some kind of physics asset that is associated with the skeletal mesh. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and simulate physics for both of these. I'm also going to uh, disable gravity. Now this isn't necessary. However, I typically prefer to disable gravity when messing around with things like this. Um, <clears throat> it's, uh, as sometimes gravity can interfere with, uh, with physics handles and things like that, it's not overly common. However, I just kind of do it as a sort of precaution, I guess you could say. And then let's go ahead. Lastly, we'll jump down here to our collision here. Uh, I'm actually going to do a custom collision here. I'm going to want to overlap our pawn. And um, this is something that you probably do want to do as for the most part, our player is going to be a pawn and we want to make sure that it, our pawn is not going to interfere with the skeletal mesh components at all. Um, it'll be kind of weird if we put it, our hands down to our sides and they can't reach our sides for whatever reason. Uh, and then I'm also going to uh, enable our collision. We're gonna to wanna to make sure query and physics is enabled here. And let's go and do that for our other hand here as well. Collision enabled and our pawn is overlapped. And that should be it here in our skeletal mesh. And the last thing we're gonna to wanna to add is a couple of physics handles. So we'll call this physics handle left and physics handle right. And that should be it. Oh. Uh, actually, that's not it. Uh, the physics handles. So um, here in our physics handles, we're going to want to actually disable soft angular, soft linear, and interpolate target. Now this may vary depending on your on the project you're doing. 
This will essentially make it just a little bit snappier. So it'll actually be a little bit um, closer to our motion control component, our target location rotation. You can enable these and mess around with these. Uh, however, if we leave it as the default settings, it'll actually be a little bit spongy. Uh, it'll also lag behind the motion control component a little bit. Uh, we'll essentially get something where our hand will kind where it'll kind of follow around. And then once it does kind of reach, it'll kind of go back and forth a little bit. So it can be a little bit funny. I don't prefer having these enabled um, just because they it gets a little bit spongy, but that's entirely up to you. Um, so I'll go and leave that. So next let's go and create a function that we can run on startup so that way we can make sure everything gets set up correctly. I'm just gonna call this um, setup is what I'm gonna call this. Now this is gonna be called within our player. And the reason being is we're going to need a few values from the player as well. And we're going to store them here within our collision hands. So let's go and start by creating those variables we need. So we'll go and create left motion controller and we're gonna need a motion controller component. And let's go and create a second one as well, right? Motion controller. And we're gonna to wanna to set both of these right here. Set. Ooh. And we'll go and make that look a little bit nicer. And those are gonna be a couple of values that we're going to need from our player once we actually go and spawn this in. Uh, in addition, we're also going to need to be able to make sure our physics handles and our skeletal mesh are all set up and ready to go here. We can, of course, run this through begin play. However, I just think running all, all this at the same time will just save us a little bit of time here. So let's go ahead and grab our physics handles and our skeletal meshes. And for both of our physics handles, we're going to want to grab component at location with rotation. Now the component value is going to be the corresponding skeletal mesh. In this case, we're working with physics handle left. So we're gonna want our left skeletal mesh. And then for our location rotation, this is going to be the point that we want to grab this at. So in this instance, for example, we're going to want to get world transform of our skeletal mesh. And I'm gonna go and right click, split struct, uh, split pin struct, and we're going to do location, rotation, just go and feed that in. And, and then we're gonna to wanna to do that again for our right physics handle. So grab component. Now you may also notice here, we also have grab component location. Now you certainly can do this. However, we'll kind of get a funny uh, interaction where our hand will kind of dangle at the target location it won't actually try and match the rotation that we want it to be at. So by, by grabbing a location and rotation, we can make sure that we'll have, um, we'll, we'll have a little bit better, um, we'll, we'll have the, uh, at least a more correct rotation. Now, if you also want to adjust the rotation of your hands, I would also suggest coming into here and modifying this rotation value. Um, I, I would probably do this by simply adding or subtracting, basically breaking this rotation and then uh, adding and subtracting to the X, Y, and uh, Z values um, and then feed, making a new rotator out of, a rotation out of that. Um, that's entirely up to you though. There are of course other ways of, of handling this. Um, so yeah. Now in our event graph for a collision hand, we're not gonna need our begin play or our actor begin overlap, but we will need our tick. So in our tick, we're gonna to wanna to grab our physics handles. There we go. And we're also going to need our left motion controllers, which we, which we assign in setup. So let's go ahead, grab these. And in order for this to work, we're going to want to set a target location and rotation. What this will do is it will basically, to the best of its ability, the physics handle will try to take whatever component it's grabbed and try to the best to and try as accurately as possible get that component as close to our target location rotation as it possibly can. So our hand itself may go through the wall or something like that. However, our our skeletal mesh here will not be allowed to pass through a wall because we've enabled collisions for it um, and we've enabled physics which is required by a physics handle. 
Um, so it, it'll basically try its best to get to wherever that motion control component is, and it might even slide across the wall a little bit. However, it won't actually be able to get through that wall because it's just not allowed to. So let's go ahead, set target location rotation. And our target location rotation is going to be based off of our motion control components. So let's go ahead and get the world transform for each. Go ahead and right click. Oh, I mean to promote that. <laughs> go and delete that. Split struck pin. And then our location and our rotation will get fed in here. And we're gonna to wanna to do, again, the same thing for our right physics handle as well. So let's go and get world transform, split struck pin, location goes in, rotation goes in, and we are good to go. Let me see if I can't clean this up a little bit though first. Certainly not the cleanest work I've done. There we go. Uh, that'll be a little bit cleaner. And with that, we're all done here with our collision hands. So, so let's go and close out of that. Let's go and open up our player. Now here, like I said originally, you're going to have a little bit of difference between Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5's player. Um, Unreal Engine 5, we have our motion controller components right here. Unreal Engine 4 stores the motion controllers as separate actors. It essentially splits the player into three parts. So you're going to want to grab, I believe if I recall, they're stored under variables left controller and right controller. It might be left motion controller and right motion controller. Um, and in there is where you're going to find your motion controller components. Fortunately, here in Unreal Engine 5, we don't need to worry about that because everything we need is right here. It's already all attached together. So now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and spawn an actor. By the way, I'm doing this in begin play. I forgot to mention that. So we're going to want to spawn an actor. And our actor is going to be the collision hands, which we had already set up. Our spawn transform, we're going to want to grab our actor transform. There we go. However, this quite frankly isn't going to matter too much. And the reason being is we're actually going to attach this as well to our actor. This shouldn't be necessary. However, I'm doing it just as a precaution to make sure everything is all attached together and we don't lose anything. So we're going to go ahead and attach actor to actor. The actor we're going to attach our collision hands to is going to be our self, which in this case is our VR pawn. And we're going to want to snap our snap to for our location and our rotation. And our scale, we're going to keep world. So that way we don't have any scaling issues or anything like that. Keeps things nice and simple. We don't have to worry about that. And then we're just going to want to run setup. There we go. And then let me go and run this underneath so we can see this. Uh, this node a little bit better. There we go. And then finally, we just need to pass through our left and motion control components from wherever they may be. There we go. And there we go. So that is our player all set up. On the player side, of course, we don't need to do as much. It's a lot of it's all set up within the collision hands themselves. So we'll go ahead and jump into VR now and we'll go ahead and give this a nice little test run here. So I'm now within our VR view. Uh, you can actually see, like I said, these are not perfect rotations. Uh, these definitely need to be modified uh, in order to get a good rotation on these. However, you can see that these are falling around our hands. And so I do want to note that the physics assets for these are not perfect. They cover like a small part of the palm here, but I can actually push them against each other and you can actually see they're they're like hitting each other which is quite in, which is uh quite nice there um unfortunately i can't get them much closer without hitting my <laughs> my controllers together um but you can also see too so i actually simulate physics um unfortunately it does uh, interfere with the teleport since the teleport needs to hit um objects um but anyways so you can actually i actually simulate physics on these blocks before starting this tutorial so i can actually go ahead and hit this, oh, come on, there we go. And you can actually see I can push these blocks around as well. Um, unfortunately, they, these blocks did affect navigation too, so it's not perfect, but you can see that it does work, which is pretty cool. And with that, that is a very simple way to allow for collisions between a player and a virtual environment within VR. 
As I stated, the mannequin hand probably isn't the best example to have used for, the, for this tutorial as the physics asset is not perfect and can definitely be a little bit spazzy at times. But you should have plenty of luck working with other skeletal meshes if you decide to design your own. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below and I'll see you in the next reality.